thank you very much. Um, I just want to underline the question mark in my talk. I'm not saying rethinking vulnerability, I'm saying rethinking vulnerability. So it's more tentative. <laughs> and I really want to use this opportunity to just sort of open up some new questions and get the, some insights from the room. Um, I liked Steve's talk and particularly these points about, um, uh, there was an NB in one of, in one of your slides, Steve, Steve, which said there was external support, but it was insufficient to meet local needs. And I think that's quite an important NB here. Um, and also your point about targeting. So I want to talk about this question of um, vulnerability in, um, in pastoralist areas. Um, my research at the moment is looking at anticipatory action, finding new ways of, um, uh, finding ways of improving anticipatory action in pastoralist areas, making it more relevant to local pastoralist groups. Um, but I'm not talking about that right now, that you can speak to me uh, later on when I have my poster, if you want to hear more about that research. I want to talk a little bit about some sort of emerging ideas and questions that have come out from recent uh, ongoing fieldwork in the north of Kenya, um, which I'm currently doing. Um, and this is work that's very much framed by uh, research I've been undertaking in Kenya for the last 10 years, looking at all sorts of different themes, including livelihoods, climate change, market services, this kind of thing. Um, and something that really overarches all of these different intersecting themes, including my ongoing research into humanitarian assistance, is the importance of wide social networks for pastoralist groups. It's absolutely not new in the literature to say that pastoralists manage variability and uncertainty through these expansive social networks. Um, and these networks are really key to engendering what my colleagues at Tufts would call relational resilience. Um, so this is my work which is ongoing in the north of Kenya at these various sites around, um, around Lake Turkana. Um, so really something that I've been thinking about recently um, during fieldwork in Turkana is um, this question of whether there is s need now to start rethinking how we are um, assessing vulnerability, how we are measuring and assessing uh, vulnerability and particularly in advance of the distribution of humanitarian assistance. Um, this, as I say, is not really the thrust of my research. It's something that's just sort of emerging recently through ongoing discussions and fieldwork. And so I'd really like to spend the time today uh, at the table to hear what people's thoughts are about this. Um, but really, I think what I'm interested in asking is are the vulnerability assessments that we're currently relying on really doing what we're imagining them to do? Um, and is there scope for designing more locally relevant ways of assessing vulnerability? And I guess to, to frame those questions, I'll um, just sort of tell a story from some recent fieldwork I did in Tarkana. Um, my fieldwork actually coincided with the distribution of food Sure, it, it was happening shortly before the recent onset of rain, so things were very dry still. Um, food was actively being distributed during my field work, and I was working in a cluster of different villages in southern Turkana. Um, everyone was, so the communities had been visited by an organization. A targeting exercise had been undertaken um, during which vulnerable community members had been um, targeted for the rec receipt of this food. Those uh, community members then, uh, when the distribution of food began, went to collect their food and immediately came back and redistributed all of their food to the rest of the community. So in this context, the actual targeting of vulnerable community members really isn't performing the function that perhaps it's imagined to be performing from the context of the humanitarian organization doing it. And I think that's challenging because on one level, um, the foundation on which many decisions are being made in the humanitarian sector is sort of unstable in that, in that regard, um, because really that small amount of food is feeding a very large population, and the exercise of mapping vulnerable people might not necessarily mean much at all. Um, but on another level, there are potentially other forms of vulnerability that are not being included in these kinds of vulnerability assessment, because if you think about vulnerability as something to do with your connectivity, the size of your social network, um, there are potentially forms of vulnerability that are not captured by existing 
uh, forms of, of uh, vulnerability assessment. So I'm interested in thinking about whether there's scope for designing new approaches to that. Um, so as I say, this is uh, not central to my research at all. It's some thinking that's been going on as a result of field work I've been undertaking in northern Kenya, and which is actively ongoing. So really like your insights today, this is something that might not be relevant at all. It might be something that data could be collected around in the months um, ahead. And so I'd be interested to hear what kinds of data might be relevant to thinking about these questions um, and um, what kind of research might be needed to, uh, to address these questions. Um, thank you very much. <laughs>